welcome students uh, today our topic is uh, power system uh, which is the continue part of the previous lecture in the previous lecture we are discussing about the uh, various various uh, uh, system like uh, single phase uh, system dc system uh, three phase system and we are looking the comparison of uh, single phase system dc two wire system dc two three wire system dc two wire with midpoint earth and three phase system and three phase three wire and three phase four wire and all these uh, comparison we are uh, looking in the favor or in the overhead system and now we are discussing uh, this thing in the underground system so for this uh, underground system uh, for the comparison purpose uh, we have to make some assumptions and for these assumptions uh in all cases the power uh, is to be transmitted is same uh, which is p watts and the distance over which the power is transmitted is l watt l so uh, we taking the length for the distance to be transmitted is l the line losses are same we are assuming that uh, these are the w watts and the maximum voltage between two conductor is same and which is vm volts so these assumption we are made for the comparison of the cost under conductor in the case of underground system now for first we are looking to the dc system in dc system first we have a dc two wire system when we, you look to the figure we have a dc system in which the current flow is i1 and the voltage between two terminal is vm so the voltage between two conductor is vm volts and the load current i1 is equal to p by vm so the line losses are the line losses is calculated by i square r so we have a two conductor here so Two I one square R one I one is the current flow in this DC two wire system, and R one is the resistance of this conductor. In the case of DC two wire system, so and now we put the value of I one from here to in this. So we got line losses is equal to two P square rho L upon V M square A one. So R one is equal to rho L upon A. We know that, and A one is the area of this conductor. so now from this we calculate the value of a1 and a1 is equal to 2 p square rho l upon w vm square so now the volume of conductor material required so we have a two conductor so a1l is the volume of conductor material required we have a two conductor so 2a1l so we put the value of a1 from here to here so uh, which is equal to 4 p square rho l square upon w vm square and we uh assuming that it is equal to k and we compare other values from this k so it is a reference now for the dc two wire system with midpoint earth this uh, you look to the diagram we have a dc two wire and this midpoint is earth and the current flow is i2 and the voltage between two conductor is vm so in this system is the same as a dc two wire system so volume of conductor material required in the system is same as a dc as in dc two wire system so in both the cases the volume of conductor material required is same now for the dc three wire system when we when you look to the diagram we have a dc three wire system here and the current flow in this uh, conductor is i3 and here it is a third wire and the voltage between two conductor is vm so the maximum outer voltage between conductor is vm volts load current is i3 we already uh, said that which is equal to p upon vm line losses are 2 i3 square r3 so i3 is the current and r3 is the resistance of this conductor and we put the value of i3 in r3 r is equal to rho l upon a so we put the value so we calculate the line losses which is equal to 2 p square rho l upon 
vm square a3 and we calculate the value of a3 now we have a third wire and the overall cross section is just half of the outer conductor so the volume of conductor material required in the system is 2.5 a3 l 2.5 a3 l so and we put the value of a3 so we which is equal to 5 p square rho l square upon vm square w and when we compare the dc2 wire system which is which is equal to 1.25 k so hence we can say that the volume of conductor material required in dc3 wire system is equal to uh, or we can say the 1.25 times of that required in dc2 wire system now uh, when we look to the ac system we uh, the current flow in this i4 and the voltage between the uh, outer terminals is vm so the maximum voltage between conductor is vm then the rms voltage between two conductors is vm by root 2 volts so the load current which is equal to i4 uh, is equal to p upon vm by root 2 cos phi is equal to root 2 p divided by vm cos phi where we know that cos phi is the power factor of the load line losses w is equal to 2 i square line losses w which is equal to i4 square r4 and we put the value of i4 and the value of this resistance which is equal to rho l upon a4 and we get the value and now then we calculate the value of a4 now we have a two conductor so the volume of conductor material required is 2 a4 l so we put the value of a4 from here and we get the value this and then we compare this value to the dc2 wire system in underground so which is equal to 2k upon cos square phi hence we can say that the volume of conductor multi required in single phase dc system is 2k by cos square phi times of that required in dc2 wire system now single phase two wire system with midpoint earth so here we have a single phase and our midpoint is earth and the current flow in this scheme is i5 and the voltage is vm so in the system uh, it is same as a uh, in this this system is same as a two wire single phase ac system so volume of conductor material required is also 2 by cos square phi times of that required in dc two wire system so now for the single phase three wire system we have, when we look to the figure we have a three wire third wire is here which is earth and the current flow in this conductor is i6 and the voltage is vm so and in this uh, the cross section of this third wire is just half of the outer conductor so the volume of conductor material required in the system is 2.5 a4 l so it is equal which is equal to 2.5 cos square phi k hence the volume of conductor material required in the system is 2.5 by cos square phi times of the required in dc two wire system now the cost comparison uh, three phase is system we have a three phase system which have of the vo voltage vm between the two conductors and the current flow is i9 so the maximum voltage between the conductor is vm and the rms voltage between the conductor is vm by root 2 and the rms value of voltage per phase is equal to vm by root 2 root 3 which is equal to vm by root 6 so we calculate the load current i9 and from this we calculate the line losses which is equal to 3 i9 square r9 r9 is the rho l upon a9 and we put the values and get the value of a9 now the volume of conductor material required in this uh, three phase ac system is we have a three conductor here so uh, it is equal to 3 a9 l and we put the value and then compare this uh, value to the dc two wire system and we have the 1.5 by cos square phi k so we can say that 
the volume of uh, conductor material required in a three phase AC system is 1.5 by cos square phi times of that required in DC two wire system. Now again we have a AC four wire system, here we have a AC uh, four wire system and we have a three conductor and there is a neutral wire which is the fourth wire and the cross section of this wire is just half of the outer conductor. So the volume of conductor material required is 3.5 in INL and we put the values and when we compare this result to the DC2 wire system we have the result that 1.75k by cos square phi. So we can say that the volume of conductor material required in the system is 1.75 by cos square phi times of that required in DC 2 wire system. So now we have an example like a 3 phase 4 wire system is used for lightning. Compare the amount of conductor material required with that needed for a 2 wire direct current system with the same lamp voltage. Assume the same loss and balance load. The neutral is one half the cross section of, of one of the respective outer. So we have a neutral whose cross section is half of the outer conductor. So now for the solution let we let, let the, or we are assuming the lightning load supplied be P watts at a voltage of V between line and neutral in case of three phase four wire system and and line losses is W watt in both of the cases. Now for the DC two wire system the load current is I1 P upon V amperes then line losses W is equal to we know that in a DC 2 wire system, we have the line losses are 2 I1 square R1. So, we put the values of I1 and R1 and we get the result which is W is equal to 2 P square rho L upon V square A1 where rho is the resistivity of the conductor, L is the length of the line and the A1 is the cross section of the conductor. Now, the area of the conductor is A1 is equal to 2 P square rho L upon V square W. Now, for the DC2 wire system, the volume of conductor material required is equal to 2 A1L. So, we put the value of A1 here and we, we have 4 P square rho L square by V square W. Now, for the 3 phase 4 wire system, power supplied by each phase we have is equal to P by 3. Now, the RMS voltage between the line and neutral is equal to V volts. We assume that our power factor is unity, then the cos phi is equal to 1. So, the load current I2 is equal to P upon 3 V amperes and the line losses are W3 I square R2. We put the value and get the value of A2. So, and now in a 3 phase 4 wire system, we know that the volume of conductor material required is 3.5 A2L because uh, the neutral wire, the cross section of the neutral wire is just half of the outer conductor. So, we put the value and get the result. Similarly, many numericals are there. Now, when we look to the overhead lines, we have a uh, various type of components there. And these components are, uh, first of all, uh, is the support. And these supports are the pole or a tower depend upon the working voltage. We have a various type of working voltage like we have a working or we are working on uh, 0.4 or we can say that 415 volts. Next is 11 kV, 33 kV, 66 kV, 132, 220, 400, 765. So, we have a various type of working voltage. So, the line uh, supports are depend upon the working voltage and the function of the line support is obviously to support the conductors. So, they can be uh, adjusted uh, or we can uh, suitably uh, level above the ground. Next is cross arm and clamps. These are either of wood or steel angle section and are used on pole structure to support the insulator and conductor. 
so these are, are uh, basically used to support the insulator so, so we, uh, the uh, insulator can hold the conductor next is insulator various type of insulator are connected on the support uh, the insulator insulators are pin type suspension type shackle type various type of insulator are there conductor the, uh, various type of conductor we are using in overhead line like uh, we have a copper conductor aluminum conductor acsr conductor triple a conductor many type of conductor are there guys and stay to protect the uh, pole from falling uh, we uh, apply guys and stay lightning arrestor uh, to discharge excessive voltage built upon the line to earth due to lightning uh, the device is known as lightning arrestor fuses and isolating switches to isolate different part of the overhead system we are also using continuous earth wire is run on the top of the tower to protect the line against lightning discharges v guard are often uses to provide below bare overhead line running along or across public street to make the line safe if it should break guard wire also there face plate also there to show the the sequence of the phases bird guard is also there danger plate uh, it provide on each pole as a warning measure indicate the working voltage on the line and word danger bar wire is uh, wrapped on a pole at a height of about 2.5 meter from the ground from at least 1 meter these prevent climbing by unauthorized person and miscellaneous items are also there like a damper hot uh, top hammer jumper etc now uh, when we talk about the pole or the structure uh, for the overhead line these have the following uh, requirement like it should have a high mechanical strength to bear the conductor weight wind load etc the conductor uh, is also or very bulky it has to uh, contain too much weight so it uh, the support should have to be mechanically strong and maintenance should be easy and cost should be very low it should be very light in weight and extremely durable proper spacing between conductors and ground clearance must be maintained the line supports have a longer life these are have definitely have to be good looking and have to be easy accessibility for painting and erection of line conductor also so these are the following requirements of from the line supports now when we look to the line support we have a, a four type of line support for the transmission and distribution purposes these are wooden pole reinforced and concrete poles steel poles and last is lattice steel towers now uh, when uh, you are looking uh, the picture of the wooden pole these uh, wooden poles are uh, generally uh, installed at the remote area or rural area or where the wood are uh, uh, available in uh, plenty manner so uh, from uh, these are use up to only uh, 11 kv line and a uh, aluminum or zinc or a cement cap is provided at the top of the pole so the uh, use of this cap to protect from the uh, pole from the uh, rainfall and the bituminous coating is provided at the bottom of this pole for the longer life these are the steel pole we have a various type of steel pole the steel tubular pole rail pole and h type rs joist pole uh, the tubular pole are the uh, welded at the different points and the different type of uh, radius uh, pole are joined at the different location the bottom part of this uh, pole uh, the diameter of this pole is large and the top uh, diameter is less same like uh, rail pole is just uh, uh, manufactured from the rail and these are generally you see at the railway colonies especially these are it is a rcc pole uh, the you are looking to the street line uh, everywhere 
the RCC pole is installed frequently. Uh, uh, the outer uh, portion is uh, from the cement and the RCC uh, is done. This uh, iron rods are in between this pole and these are the sill lattice towers. These uh, towers are manufacturing at this site and generally these are installed at the uh, for the 400 kV, 220 kV or the high voltage line uh, and uh, you see the single circuit and the double circuit line. These are the various type of cross section, uh, cross arm installed at the pole, uh, MS-10 or a wooden cross arm, U-shaped cross arm, V-shaped cross arm and the zigzag cross arm at the different different poles. And uh, it is the method of fixing of the cross arm on the pole, the pole is there and uh, cross arm is just behind the pole from the clamp and the nut we are just uh, tighten the clamp to the cross arm and just fixing this cross arm on the pole. And uh, finally you see the uh, guide and stay arrangement. Uh, this arrangement is done or is attached at the top of the pole and uh, this uh, the bottom portion is just grounded and the uh, fixed in the RCC portion and it is just uh, create some pressure if the pole is uh, just uh, fall in this direction uh, or it can uh, so we are just create additional force by this guys and stay that's all for today the next topic we are discussing in next class